Hello, this is Andrea and Daniel, and Libby is along too, and we're on our way to Kansas. We have a wedding to go to. We'll be staying at Lake Myola Park, Paola, Kansas. We loved seeing the beautiful scenery on the way. Everything is so green right now. We plan to get to Des Moines, Iowa on this first day. We got as far as Des Moines, Iowa, and we stayed behind a Cracker Barrel. We enjoyed uh, the breakfast there the next morning, and then we continued on our way. This was just a cool little city we stopped at to take a break, eat a little food while we rested, and we came to this City Park and nice little building there and we'll see what this sign says oh it's the shape of a clover here they have a nice little bandstand There's where we parked. Okay, Daniel, how many miles are we from Kansas City? Oh, I think about 60 miles, 58, 60 miles. We got another 40 miles to go past that. So. so we have a good 100 miles to go before we get to our campsite in Kansas, which is at Paolo. The wedding we're going to is in Louisburg, Kansas. That's only about 18 minutes yeah, from it, our campsite. Yeah, it's only like 12 miles, I think. Uh, however, we do have relatives to visit in um, Shawnee, Kansas. And that's a little further away. That's actually a suburb of Kansas City, Kansas. So. Um, we'll be visiting them on Friday, Friday, Friday well, morning. So, and today is Thursday, our second day on the road. The approximately 560-acre park offers a variety of water sports, including boating, skiing, swimming, and fishing on a 200-acre lake. It has camping, picnic areas, a playground, and hiking trails. You can see how our campground is in the center of the lake, and the hiking trails go around the entire lake. We saw, you know, quite a bit of wildlife. I mean, here is that water snake. I would like to know what uh, type of snake that is, but we would see birds every day and uh, a lot of little turtles just peeking their head up out of the water. They were fun to watch. 
Now this, um, we found out that this is an actual model airplane event. There were a whole, a whole group of people parked down there. And so even though we could only see like, I think two model airplanes flying around at this point, I mean, it was a little event going on. Did it? it landed on the water. Oh, now, now, it's, how you, now what do they how do? You retrieve it. Yeah, we could go it. out to it. How now that it? there is a second one, it's yellow, yeah, right? Yeah, so That's it is. okay. I think I have that. Well, it'll sit there till they. Oh, is it trying to? It can be up to it. Maybe it can upright itself. I don't know. Huh. And the snake we saw went over here in these green weeds, but we couldn't see it anymore. And also a lot of turtles will peek their... Oh, what was that? Something just happened right ahead of us here. Well, there's the boat going to rescue the airplane. So we got ready for the 430 wedding in Louisburg, Kansas. And uh, here across the way, there was a motor home. And oh, we were so surprised because we could hear this noise. And we looked and here they had brought their pet lamb along. Well, I suppose they couldn't leave it home alone, you know. So <laughs> they had it inside the motor home and they would bring it outside every now and then. The beautiful wedding and the really nice event center it was just everything about it was such a huge success and we were just so happy that we were able to attend it was time to leave our campground and uh, here i'm showing photos of driving through missouri and i'm thinking that this field is not corn I looked it up online and I think it's grain sorghum, which is uh, better adapted to drought than corn. In our travels, we sure could hear the cicadas. Hannibal, Missouri is a city rich in history. We decided to spend the night at a campground here and uh, see the sights. The Mark Twain Museum is downtown. The walkway goes all along the river here. Many benches. And we'll get a closer look at the riverboat. We enjoyed our stay, our one night stay at this Mark Twain campground. And then we decided to um, go into the, the city and uh, visit uh, the, the sites, the first one being Lover's Leap. This overlooks Hannibal, Missouri and the Mississippi.
Here's a sad story of three adventurous boys just wanting to take a hike on the same hills that Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer took, and never to be seen again. This happened in 1967. So, okay, we're gonna go to breakfast now. This is like a typical diner you would find in any small town in America. Good food and a very friendly waitress. This sign is a little faded and worn. I hope that you can still learn something about Mark Twain here. We had a good breakfast so we could make all these steps up to the lighthouse and we met a cicada. This is the third set of steps. There are a total of 244 steps up to the lighthouse. So another set of steps. The last set up to the lighthouse, we're almost there. Another short <laughs> series of steps here, and then we're finally there. Oh, I'll look at the sign here.
back to the campground to check out and continue on our journey home. We thought as long as we're driving so close, we might as well stop at Amana Colonies, just southwest of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The history of Amana Colonies, a National Historic Landmark, and one of America's longest lived communal societies, begins in 1714 in the villages of Germany and continues today on the Iowa Prairie. Prosecution and an economic depression in Germany forced the community to begin searching for a new home. They hoped to find religious freedom in America and left Germany in 1843-44. They first uh, came to Buffalo, New York, and then when more farmland was needed for a growing community, they arrived in Iowa in 1855. We're entering Dubuque, Iowa, and we did not tour this city. We decided to continue on to Wisconsin. I was searching for a campground and found a Corps of Engineers campground that we'll be heading to in Pelosi, Wisconsin. There's Daniel on the roof of our camping trailer because for some reason, and this happened to us a while back too, the water you know, that comes out of a, an air conditioning unit isn't draining off of the top of the camper the way it should, and it's dripping down into our camper over the dinette table. He's taking it apart to look to see if there's anything that's uh, in the way of the water channel. And look at the Mississippi River. The name of this campground is Grant River Recreation Area. It's a Corps of Engineering campground. Uh, so with our national pass, we actually received the campsite for half price at only $13. Uh, as you can see, they, they got quite a bit of rain here this afternoon. Although in our travels, we, we really missed it. I mean, we were going through Dubuque. We could see the, the rain clouds. Uh, we could tell the roads were wet. And we literally got only like a few sprinkles on our windshield. And the storm had passed by the time we, we got, we came through Dubuque. Um, so then Pelosi, Wisconsin is not that far from Dubuque, Iowa. And you can see how the water is just sitting around here. The other thing is, is that on our van, on the way here, the battery light went on. So in driving it, at least we got it to the campground, but he's almost sure it's an alternator. And so first thing in the morning, when they open at 8 a.m., we'll be calling uh, some mechanics and we can't go home until we get a new alternator. So we think it is anyways, Hot time on the roof. <laughs> Another shower, <laughs> okay. We took a walk to the other end of the campground just to see the sunset. We always love to take a photo of that.
good morning. This sure is a beautiful campground right on the Mississippi. And right next to the railroad tracks. I didn't sleep much after 2 a.m. These trains continue all night long. <clears throat> so if you have a dog that is, that is anxious, easily frightened, or if you would not be able to sleep through this, I wouldn't recommend staying here. <clears throat> In the evening hours, sometimes two, two or three trains are coming. About every, you know, it's, 10 it's, minutes and It's stuff. often. It's really, really busy at night. of four or five mechanics. They all opened at 8 a.m. He called the closest one at the uh, beginning of this hilly, windy road coming down to this campground. And they said, well, um, if it's the alternator, getting the alternator is not the problem, but uh, getting a technician to be able to work on it because it sounds like they're quite busy. Uh, so he said, well, just bring it down. He said, We're, we'll take a look at it. So now I just uh, got in contact with Daniel. He's down there in the waiting room. They do have it in the shop now. At first, all four bays were, were filled with other people's vehicles, but it's in the shop now. And they're going to run to Dubuque for the part. It's 11 o'clock already. No, it's 10 o'clock. So that'll be 11 o'clock. And then once they start working on it, hopefully it won't take too long because really we have a checkout time of noon. The way it's looking, it looks like we still might get home today. So that's good. That's good that they're getting the part and it'll be taken care of. So Libby and I are spending time at the campground. And uh, it's overcast today. As you can see, it's hazy across the Mississippi. I don't, I don't know if they're expecting rain here or not. And uh, down here, as we're, I'm sitting on the bench here, it's uh, breezy, so it's cool. It hasn't turned hot and muggy yet. So I, I'm hoping that by 1 p.m. we might be a little late leaving this campground, but at least we'll be heading out today. So that's the update on the alternator problem with the van.